Being on trend is important in the car world and considering right now people want SUVs and soon more of us will be considering an electric vehicle, combining the two is a smart move. Step in the Jaguar I-Pace, a fully electric SUV that looks like it's just been driven off the set of a futuristic movie. Now, while you might be thinking that the iPace's key rival is Tesla's Model X, it's actually priced closer to the Model S electric luxury saloon. And soon, Audi's e-tron and Mercedes EQC will be among its key rivals. Has Jaguar created a truly revolutionary product then? And is it practical enough to convince you to buy an electric car or an electric SUV? That's what we'll find out in this review. And remember, we don't just review cars at What Car, we can help save you thousands on your next new car. Just go to whatcar.com and go to our new car deal section. First though, let's see what it's like to drive. Powering the I-Pace are two electric motors which together pump out 395 brake horsepower and that's enough to get this car from 0 to 60 in just 4.5 seconds which is quicker than most cars let alone electric or SUV. As with all electric cars you get the maximum amount of pulling power straight away so as soon as you put your foot down you feel this savage acceleration which is really impressive. Now the range is 298 miles, but don't expect to get that in the real world. We put it through our range test, which is a mixture of different roads, and it still managed an impressive 253 miles. On its standard suspension, the I-Pace smothers the harshness of most bumps. Whether you're crawling around town or pushing on the motorway, our only criticism is that because of its weight and height, the I-Pace can struggle to regain its composure after a tricky series of bumps. The optional air suspension allows you to choose between comfort orientated or firmer settings, the latter of which firms up the I-Pace's body movements and allows it to be quite composed around the corners. That said, the standard suspension is good enough, so we'd go for that and save your pennies. And if it's ultimate comfort that you're after, avoid the big wheels and go for the 18-inch ones instead. We've already mentioned this car's weight and it's no surprise if you cram it full of batteries it's going to be quite heavy and you can feel that weight shifting when you go through corners at speed. That said, it does hold on to its chosen line pretty well and its precise quick steering makes this actually really good fun to drive, especially for an electric car. Road and wind noise is well contained, especially on cars with laminated side windows and small wheels. There is, however, a little bit of suspension noise over some of the harshest bumps. The I-Pace can even cut it off-road, thanks to clever hill climbing and descent systems borrowed from Jaguar's sister company, Land Rover. You don't sit especially high up in the I-Pace by SUV standards, but there are part electrically adjustable seats, so you should be able to find a comfortable driving position. Forward visibility is excellent, over the shoulder not quite so good because of the thick rear pillar and also the sloping window. However, you do get a camera as standard which is perfect for parking, although it is a little bit laggy, so be careful on how quickly you're trying to park. Material quality has long been a weakness of Jaguars, but the I-Pace is every bit a premium product. Sure, these plastics are not going to give Audi a run for their money, but they are much better than those found in the E-Pace and F-Pace. Every I-Pace comes with a 12.3-inch touchscreen infotainment system, as well as a second screen the same size behind the steering wheel, which takes the place of standard dials. This can put things such as the sat-nav map directly in your field of vision, meaning you can keep your eyes on the road. There are plenty of neat features to make use of. For example, your I-Pace can learn driver preferences who have their own key fobs, and it's the first Jaguar to offer Apple CarPlay smartphone mirroring. There's also another screen down here for your climate control settings. Thankfully though, you do get some rotary dials for quick access. You're unlikely to have any problems with leg or headroom in the front of the Jaguar I-Pace because there's plenty of it, even if you're really tall. And the front seats are set far enough apart that you won't be rubbing elbows either. But where it really comes into its own is the bucket loads of storage. First of all, underneath this central cubby, we have got a family of bananas, which also fit there. 
decent sized bottle of water to fit in the door bins, which are quite spacious. Mobile phone, pop it in that slot there. Hairbrush, lip gloss, another storage there, and sunglasses. And I could have fitted more in there as well. And the glove box is a reasonable size. Space in the back is pretty good, even if you're six foot, although you may feel slightly claustrophobic just because of this sloping roof line. Otherwise, head and leg room is plentiful. Anybody who's sitting in the middle seat, however, has a very hard, uncomfortable backrest compared with the plush, comfy seat I've got here. And there's no option for a seven seater, unlike the Tesla, where you can. The absence of an engine in the I-Pace means that the whole passenger compartment can be positioned further forward and that usually frees up extra space for the boot. The I-Pace isn't as large as you might expect though. We managed to fit seven carry-on suitcases inside which is less than you'll be able to fit in a regular SUV such as the Audi Q5. Still, it is a usable shape and it has a wide opening which makes it easier to get bulky items in and out. And if you need to create more space, you can split and fold the rear seats and that gives you a virtually flat floor. Underneath here is where all the charging cables are stowed and there's a small amount of space underneath the bonnet as well. The Jaguar I-Pace is an expensive choice in the electric car market, so it's not going to convert millions of people to electric motoring on its own. It is, however, cheaper to buy than both of Tesla's Model X and S, and is also cheaper on a PCP monthly deal. You can recharge the batteries from zero to 80% in 10 hours from a standard wall charger. If you're out using one of the higher capacity public ones, cut that time down to 80 minutes. And it will also work off a 100 kilowatt charge which takes just 40 minutes, but there's not many of those just yet in the UK. The iPace is also exempt from the London congestion charge and qualifies for the government's electric vehicle grant. Entry level S models come with lots of luxuries, including keyless entry, dual zone climate control, and automatic emergency braking, while upgrading to SE trim gets you larger wheels, adaptive cruise control, and additional safety kit, such as blind spot monitoring system. There's also the range topping HSE trim, which brings heated and cooled seats, among other things. But we think the S makes the most sense. There's two other nifty things to note. Firstly, there's a Jaguar in control app, which allows you to set climate control and heat up the battery. So it's at its most efficient when you set off. And the second, just like Tesla, you get automatic updates wirelessly. So new features and improvements could be unlocked further down the line. All in all, the iPace is an appealing electric car. It offers a big range in between charges, engaging handling and futuristic looks. For plenty more on this car, including our full online review, head to whatcar.com. You can also check out its competition and you can see how much money we can save you on your next new car. Just go to our new car deals section. But before you do any of that, never miss another video. Hit subscribe.